Hi there. So happy you're back. This is Quest for You. Thank you for deciding to make my little message part of your day. For taking the time to improve your day. Because this is what my goal is. That you are getting something out of this and can apply it to your life. This is episode 198. Complaining again. You're probably wondering, what are we going to talk about? Well, at my last dinner with my Quest for You meetup group here in Oakland, someone brought up a question. How to deal with complainers. People that only see the negative in everything. The class half empty, the options stacked against them with no way out. How do you respond to them when they are people that are near and dear to your heart? You care about and you want to see succeed. What do you say? Do you respond with empathy? That would mean you join the complaining party. You agree with them that indeed the world is against them. Or do you push them to get off the complaint train and do something? Look for new opportunities. Challenge themselves. See the positive they have in their life. Tricky, right? Pushing them is risky business. They may not see what you see. After all, that's why they are on the complaint train already. They may not agree and may get angry at you for not showing more understanding. Could leave you feeling guilty, thinking you were too harsh. On the other hand, only showing empathy may make you feel like you didn't offer enough real help. So here, today, on this episode, I will craft my answer to my friend who brought it up, and to whom I couldn't respond in the moment. Because this is not an easy question. Nobody at the table knew exactly what to recommend. I needed time to think, and I wanted to think about this because it is something we all have and will encounter. And maybe after this episode, you discover that you are a complainer too. I think at some point, we all complain a little bit here and there as well. But complaining is unproductive. It's stating the obvious with a bunch of embellishment on top to make it sound even more desperate. But complaining alone doesn't resolve anything. Now let me clarify. Sometimes we all need to vent, let it all out. Sometimes it's all a bit much and we feel overwhelmed. So we blow off steam, we whine, we complain, and we have a little pity party. And sometimes this is absolutely necessary to gain clarity or simply to start a conversation. But to some people, complaining is a way of life. It is their way for communicating with their loved ones. It's their way to approach work or any other task. And it's their means to get things done by complaining. Chronic complaining is low-value behavior, but you can't tell that to someone who isn't ready to hear it. They are also not ready to hear your advice and won't be satisfied with your empathy. And neither are you. Complainers suck you into their world. They seek attention and they don't want to think on their own. So they offload onto you. And while you're trying to help, sympathize and come up with ideas, the complainer just sits there, rebuttals everything you say and making you feel frustrated and not good enough. So if your approach is not successful with the complainer and it's affecting you negatively, then let's figure out a better one. Between complaint and help, there's a gap, I believe, that can be bridged, leaving you in a better place and challenging the complainer in a productive way. So in order to build this bridge, we need to start with empathy. Always start with empathy. Always try your best to take one step towards the other person. Whether it's someone with a serious issue or a boring nag, try to respond with kindness. Kindness is the first building block of every bridge, no matter how deep the cliff or how far the other side is away. Be generous with compassion. This makes the complainer feel validated and leaves the door open. Without it, the other person shuts down feels unheard, and you lost the opportunity to build your bridge. Show that you care about what they're saying. You could say, I hear you, or that must be really tough, or I can only imagine. 
Empathy is hard for those of us who want to give advice right away and fix the situation. But we need to remember that the complainer is not yet ready for the advice. Just listen, nod, and show that you are there for them. This may be just a brief moment with someone that you have listened to complaining on a daily basis. But it's worth it. Because now the door is open and you can start the next section of your bridge. If you continue with too much empathy, you are in danger of getting sucked in. So now is the time to separate yourself from the issue which is not yours and begin to help the complainer see that it's theirs to figure out. The best way to do this is to pull, tug a little bit on the complainer by asking questions. I know, hard for us advice givers because we have hundreds of possible answers ready to give, but it's not the right time for that. I'm a huge believer in questions. Questions open doors. They demonstrate interest and build a connection, and they help getting to the root of the issue. They challenge the other person to dig a little bit deeper, something chronic complainers have not done enough of. So we are making them work a little bit. Tell me more. If you think they're just touching the surface and that there is more underneath, why do you think this way when they are being negative about something? Even if you already know the answers to some of the questions, Showing interest is a bridge builder. It will help distance yourself a little from the issue and allow the other person to take a step towards you by giving their complaining some thought. Maybe he started with, my life sucks. After some sympathy and a few questions, you now may have a few reasons why he thinks this way. The complainer just laid down a piece for the bridge by giving you more info. So now it's your turn again. Encourage. Build the complainer up. Complainers often don't feel good about themselves. They seek attention because they want to avoid taking responsibility or excuse their behaviors. All of this comes from someone who is afraid to step up and take ownership. The topic of yesterday's episode. I realize that our first reaction is to be annoyed with someone like that. But we need to realize that complaining is also an outcry for help. Maybe not in the best format. But it is one. So we can bring our part by reaching out. Show appreciation for the information the complainer gave you, especially if he's trying hard. And even if it's still all a complaint that seems petty and lazy to you, thank him for sharing the info with you and find a way to encourage him. And here you can interject some small piece of advice. I always try to tell from my point of view by sharing what has worked for me. That way, it is less lecturing and more personal. Again, it builds the bridge and it leaves the door open. It also allows you to remain at a distance. We advice givers take it so personal when the complainer dismisses our well-intended suggestions. We're trying to help and are not listening. And most complainers don't. They will most likely dismiss it as not applicable to, applicable to their situation. So it's best to keep it low-key and personal to what has worked for you. Kind of a take-it-or-leave-it approach. You're extending your hand, but you're not forcing the person to take it. You're not getting wrapped up in an argument over the validity of your advice. You're simply providing a nice gesture. So, after you showed your compassion, you asked questions, and you shared some advice, you have built the bridge. It is now up to the complainer to cross it. And you can hand over the baton by simply asking him what he's going to do next. So what's your next step? How will you go about this issue? What will you do to fix it? It's the time when the complainer either steps up or doesn't. After you made him feel safe, heard, and even provided some insight, you have built as close of a bridge as you could. You've done your part and now you need to distance yourself. You cannot do the work for him, nor can you feel endless sorry for him. Each person needs to do their own work. And as you may know from your own experience with the complainers in your life, some of them just like to complain. Every day, if you let them, without end. And if these are people that you need to work or live with every day, you need to set boundaries. If you let them, they will continue complaining and making you feel bad because your help is not being accepted. 
by asking them what their plan is, they are forced to reflect. And if they are not ready to reflect and continue the complaining train, then you move on as well. You tried your best. Hopefully, they will either find a way to move forward or leave it alone. It's all a push and pull to bridge the gap between complaint and advice. It's a closing in on each other. For the complainer to see more clearly where he can drop the whining and start taking action without being told what to do. And for you, the dear friend or partner, to stand by his side without giving in to the negativity. If someone in your life is complaining again, maybe now you have a little bit of a guideline because I realize it can be annoying and sometimes complainers really have a way of hurting the relationships that we have with them. Try building a bridge as hard as it can be and maybe it will improve your relationship. Much love.